Yes. So we'll let people in as, yeah. as they join us. But yeah, you know, when I said, how you doing? They said, we're blessed. I said, I, I can actually see that you believe that. I can see that you believe it yeah. from, the, from the fruit and the light. Yeah. And so we can say, you can teach a parrot. You know, a parrot can say, God loves me or whatever. Yeah. Um, but what God's heart is that is that we're persuaded in our hearts to actually believe. And how are we There's persuaded? It. Right. How are we persuaded? Through the word. Through Absolutely. The word. Yeah. Absolutely. Amen. We don't yeah. per, we don't persuade ourselves, right? That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't got a word in ourselves <laughs> That's right. to, to raise us from the dead. Right. Okay. It has to be the word that the Father has spoken in Christ, at, and our hearts are persuaded of it. You know. Right. It's funny, uh, my um, my son Tom there. Uh, he was one of my foster sons, but he's like a son. He texted me early this morning, and he said. He loved the message Sunday, and he said, uh, when, when Eve spoke to the serpent, she said, of the tree in the midst of the garden, we shall not eat or even touch it. Well, that was added, but she omitted one thing, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Mm. It was just a tree. Mm -hmm. okay so right. i mean slowly we forget we've got to constantly be reminded i was listening to uh, greg's message from sunday yeah. awesome the way of the cross you yeah. know yes and uh you know you've got to leave your life there at the cross well how do we do that we believe the word that, you know, through the cross, my life is crucified unto the world and the world is crucified unto me. It's, it's the gospel. It's the gospel. Mm. There's no other way to get there except being persuaded. That's it right there. Yeah. We That's can be, listen, if we can be persuaded of what God is persuaded of about us, mm -hmm. we're going to live a life of heaven on earth. Yeah, and it's really about, and what you said was, and it's the, it's the word of life that, that persuades our hearts to believe what God believes. And so we, we keep saying, you know, repetitively, you know, sit at the feet of Jesus, you know, yeah. and continue to hear and hear and hear the word. Yeah. Of life, because it's the word that's working in you to persuade your heart, okay, towards what God knows, already knows to be true. I mean, God's already persuaded, right? Absolutely. He doesn't, he doesn't need to be persuaded. No, <laughs> we're, the, we're the ones that need to be persuaded. And that's the, I was thinking about this uh, in light and darkness, you know, isn't the gospel called the glorious, the glorious light of the gospel? Yeah. Yep. And the gospel is the power of God unto salvation or delivering you from really deception, really from, mm -hmm. from the evil one, from walking in deception. Then I was thinking of, of John, how it all connects with what John was saying. He says, if we, in John, 1 John 1, 6, he says, if we say, there we go, we're saying yeah. a lot of things. <laughs> if yeah. we say that we have fellowship, yeah, I have fellowship with God. And, and, uh, fellowship with him and walk in darkness we lie and do not practice the truth right okay so we can say a lot of things okay now what i'm seeing here is walking in darkness is a heart that hasn't been fully persuaded that's right really about the love that god has for him Absolutely. god doesn't want you to settle for just yeah i, I think god loves me wow. now he wants you to know he in your heart you know that, you that know he loves you, you. That you know, he doesn't want you to settle for just some empty speech you know what I'm saying? Yeah. so don't don't lie against the truth and and we're talking about this the fruit it'll bear fruit what we believe 
will manifest in our life, right? Yeah, yeah and, you know what it'll manifest? Yeah. Joy and peace. <laughs> yeah. Amen? Yeah. Back to that scripture in Romans 15, 13. May right. the God of hope, hope yeah. is cheerful, confident, expectation of good. Yes. Okay? May the God of hope fill you. Fill you. All joy. How much joy? A little bit of joy? No. All joy and peace in believing through the power oh. of the Holy Spirit. What is that? That's Ephesians. Oh, Romans. No, it's Romans 15, 13. Right, Jan? Yes, it is. That's powerful, right? And that's yeah. why he's saying, he's saying don't lie against the truth. And what we're saying is God's God. It, oh, God's heart is is that our heart is persuaded to believe the love He has for us, so that we be, we be filled with the fullness of all He is. Yeah. Now, it's, it's not just you know people say, "Well, I got the joy of the Lord way down in my soul." <laughs> it's so far down there that they don't know where it's at. You know what I'm saying? And we have to just stop and say, "Why is it way down there?" You know, and let's let's start maybe rethinking about what we've been thinking or consider reconsidering what we've been considering yeah well. yeah and you know something um well first of all before i go on i just want to say from that scripture may the god of hope fill you with all joy and peace in belief yes. now let me ask you something can we have peace and joy apart from being persuaded. No, I mean, no. we'll never mm -hmm. see the manifestation of it, you know? You cannot be filled no. with joy and peace apart from being persuaded of what God's persuaded of. Right, yeah. exactly. Okay, so um, if a person doesn't have joy and peace in their heart, then what do they need? hear the word they need to hear the gospel <laughs> they need to hear the gospel they need their heart persuaded Amen. and you know something that the scripture says this whole world lies in wickedness okay paul says there's many voices in the world and none are without significance okay there's a lot of clap trap going on all the time mm. Okay, and the Holy Spirit is speaking, and the whole world is speaking. Yeah. Uh, you know, if mm -hmm. we don't hear the Holy Spirit, and if we don't, you know, sit at the feet of Jesus and let him serve us with his life, uh, it's a matter of time, but those voices out there, they're going to start ringing, and you may be saying, you know, maybe that's true. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know what I mean? I don't want to give any place for the enemy. I want my heart and mind saturated with God's truth. Well, no you hear question people, about it. You hear people sometimes, um, you know, uh, say that we keep saying the same thing over and over. Mm -hmm. That's because <laughs> there's only one thing necessary. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. And, and people is, people that say, honestly, and I've said it probably, you know, so I'm not leaving myself out of it. But when you say, well, don't they have anything else to say? Or I've heard that before. Right. You know, uh, well, there is only one gospel, right? Yeah. <laughs> There's only yeah. one word of life contained in Christ. And those who have ears to hear and know what it has done for them yeah. never get tired of it. No, that's the no. whole thing. If you say... I heard that before, but you know, you want to tell me again? <laughs> yeah. They know that is all they need. Yeah. Well, yeah. when you think about it, we hear the same thing from the world over and over again. Sure. Yes, true. The same thing. My sister and I had this conversation last week, you know, because she's she was having a hard time and I sent her a message and she was like, wow, thanks. I needed to hear that. And, and she said, you know, my brother-in-law even sat and listened to part of it with her. But, you know, he said, it's like hearing the same thing over. <laughs> and yeah. I said, I said, yeah, 
But look at the music and the shows that he listens to over and over again. And she's like, I know. She's all, it drives me nuts. Because he literally, he's one of those people that listens to the same exact music over and over again. He watches TV shows over and over and over again. And I'm like, yeah, I'm on that drives me crazy. I can't stand to watch shows over. And <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, but they're hearing the same thing over again, too. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. But there's no objection by the enemy. Right. To hear the yes. same thing over and over again, yeah. as long as it's death. Right? Yep. Yeah, he'll bring you buttered popcorn, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he wants you fixed because he wants our, he wants the world's hearts persuaded on the lie mm -hmm. instead of the truth. Yeah. And it's just like, you know, you, it never gets old to me. I mean, I, you mm -hmm. know, I just, when I, when I, when I sense that people are bored with a, a message, you know, yeah what are they what is going on here you know yeah because and honestly what the lord showed me is what is life to one can actually bring torment to another oh yeah depending on where they're at i mean jesus yeah. was the manifestation of of god in the flesh right the life of yeah. god the word of god became flesh and what brought real joy to one crowd brought torment to another yeah. you know Oh man. And it's just like it just depends on where your heart is and what it's being persuaded by, you know? Yeah. But yeah, I wouldn't yeah. trade what what I've been hearing, you know, the last few years for any amount of wealth in the world. Hey, you know? man. Yeah, take the whole world. Just oh. give me peace. <laughs> yeah. You know, when somebody says that I've heard it before, uh, why are you speaking that? You know they have they haven't got it, you know. I've heard it. <laughs> that's right they have they haven't heard it really heard it you know that's right that's it hasn't right. gone de deep inside where they've established it and i need to hear this over and over and over again because the world is constantly telling me who i'm not you know that's right. so yeah. we, we need to hear this over and over and over i never want to get tired of hearing it uh -uh. hey why do you think uh jesus always went aside and prayed Right. Amen. He needed to hear the voice of his father. He needed to constantly hear. Right. You know? Right. Yeah. And yet people today think, eh, you know, it's it's not important. You know, the thing that one thing that came to me the other day was, and we've we've read the scripture many times when Jesus was led in the wilderness, you know, and the first temptation by the serpent was turn these stones. If you're the son of God, if you're the son of God, right, stones into bread. In other words, take care of your own life, you know, care for your own life. And yeah. then Jesus says, uh, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds. That's right. That's tense, but is proceeding. That's right. Absolutely. Of, and then he says, out of the mouth of God. Yeah, and what brought what brought my attention was out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So when yeah. God is speaking, He's speaking from His heart. Amen. Mm -hmm. Praise God. <laughs> yeah, Hallelujah. Yeah. I mean, when when man speaks, he may you not know. know. Speak, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you never know where it's coming from, and that's that's what he, you know, because I, I, honestly, I'm, I, anyone can say, I know God loves me. I know God loves yeah. me, right? Yeah. But their heart is full of of sense of a yeah. Their heart is filled with with really the opposite of that. Okay. Yeah. And God looks on the inward parts. He knows what's in the heart of man. Okay. So you can put up masks. You can put up all kind of things. Yeah. But what God's interested in is is that our hearts are persuaded to believe what is really on His heart. Amen. You know, James said. Sweet water and bitter water don't come from the same fountain. Yeah. Yeah. He says, and neither should blessing and cursing come from your mouth. Mm. He says, one minute you're blessing God, and the next minute you're cursing man who's made in the image of God. Right. And you know what? 
to hear that somebody say something that is a such a bold lie against against a righteous person and i could just turn around and go ah oh, what a dirtbag boom <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. And really, what was James again? I love that because once you understand what James was saying and what he was dealing with, then it all falls into context. You know, they, they were pers being persuaded in a wrong direction. That's right. They, Absolutely. They were, they were not continuing in the perfect law of liberty, right? Amen. Amen. Were in Christ, and he could yeah. he could begin to see the fruit of that. Yeah. of that persuasion mm -hmm. we're not to lie against the truth and he yeah. wasn't he wasn't condemning or despising he was he was speaking the truth in love okay so that we wouldn't be caught up or they wouldn't be caught up in this darkness of deception absolutely of thinking you know, absolutely. that how they were thinking was yeah. okay yeah and yet you know something like i just said i could hear somebody speak a bold-faced lie against a, not, a righteous person and say, what a dirtbag. And yet, if I had just been with Jesus mm -hmm. and my heart is persuaded of what he's persuaded of, I would respond to that same person and say, oh, Father, mm -hmm. heal their heart. Yeah. Save right. their soul. What's the difference between A and B? <laughs> the second one i forgot who i am the first the, the the first one i forgot who i was the second one i'm remembering who i am it's all yeah. of remembering it's seeing and not seeing yeah yeah really and and i want to say this too because we're on this process of perfection mm -hmm. and there's no there's no shame or condemnation and God's not surprised, okay? Oh, tell me. <laughs> if, if, we, if we fluctuate in something no, comes up or no. not. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so there's no despite, you know, because we don't want to give the enemy place in that. No way. If we, yeah. if we react in a certain way that, you know, then he comes in with another offense on top okay. of it. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. But, but you'll find the more your fellowship with Jesus, the less you deviate. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. Okay. Yeah, the more we carry the heart of God, the more that we see things just totally different. From his yeah. heart. So right? From his heart. You know, yeah. we see ourselves That's different. It. We see others different. We see situations yeah. different. It just all changes. Amen. And like Jan said, it's either we're seeing or we're not seeing. And, and there's no condemnation if you don't see. Right. But right. I want to live the life of seeing, not not seeing. Amen? Because mm -hmm. it's a, a more glorious life. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. And if we're not seeing, then we just go back to the Father, just like Jesus did. You know, exactly. that's always the answer is just run to the arms of Abba Father. Amen. You know, yes. let him clothe you with truth or clarity or whatever we're needing yeah. in this situation. Yeah. You know, when you're not seen, you're constantly defending yourself. Absolutely. It's always yeah. about me and, and oh. how I've done it. Rather than when you see, it's about God and what he's done. Amen. Yeah. I mean, it's a far less painful life oh. to live seeing. Okay. Right. Right. Then they're done that. <laughs> <laughs> you know. I love that what you said, Jan. I mean, things come out, but. When you're not seeing, then you're constantly judging yourself. Amen. Right? And he yes, says, like, judge no one according to the flesh. And right. Paul says, I don't even judge myself. Yeah. You know? And see, that was part of his heart being persuaded of where his full acceptance really was in, you know, where the life was, where his care was, where his acceptance. Though all reject me, yeah. God accepts me. If mm -hmm. no one likes me, God still thinks I'm cool. <laughs> God yeah. is, yes. God is, yes. still it. likes me. And that's enough, okay, yeah. to fill you with the fullness of his life and keep you walking through this world that's, that's so contradictory. 
Absolutely. When you know that you can stand up against anything that comes against you, no matter what it is. That's right. You know, and that's being able to to know who you are in Christ. And I'm I'm his and he's mine and he's my beloved. Uh, <laughs> that's our anchor, isn't it? Amen. Well, that so scripture he, in Romans 8 keeps coming back with that on top of that. If God is for you, who can be against you? You know, right. that, that's that's such a powerful that whole Romans 8 is such a powerful thing, you know, uh, because you know, towards the end of that, he was saying, this is what I'm saying. If God is for you, who can who can be against you? Right. You yeah. know, your full acceptance and his approval and the law of the, the spirit of life in Christ sets us free from the law of sin and death. Or for looking for acceptance in the wrong places. For looking for life in the wrong places. For looking for care and, and comfort in the wrong places. Yeah. It sets us free from that. It's a spirit of truth that he is put inside of us the word you know the word yeah. and the spirit of truth that is totally in agreement of course with god the father and the son and persuading us convincing us of what's already true yeah Amen. you know when we when we don't see others as god sees us as god let me say it again if we don't see others as God sees them, then we are not seeing as God sees us. Amen. Because the way we see others is a reflection of the judgment that we have in our heart. And I think it's Matthew 7. Jesus said, judge not that you be not judged. Amen. For in the measure you meet, it will be measured back to you again. And so <clears throat> the judgment that we have in our heart is non-discriminating, okay? If the judgment we have in our heart is, I am what I do, you're gonna judge people according to their behavior, but guess what? You're gonna judge yourself according to your behavior. You can't, you can't have your cake and eat it too. You can't judge them wrong and judge yourself right. Mm -hmm. But if the judgment that we have in our heart is that God knows no man according to the flesh, right. but according to the spirit, mm -hmm. then we are free from condemnation and everybody else is free from condemnation in our sight. Yes. That's good. So, I mean, you know, I want to live free, man, you know? Yes. So there's, there's, of course, we know there's doctrines out there that, that imply, or more than imply, that before you receive Christ, okay, before you say the prayer, you know, God sees you in a different way no. than he does after you say the prayer. Uh, right? Yeah. And that, that, yeah. And that, so you see how this this had this persuasion, which is a strong persuasion over the church, has caused has caused a lot of the church to judge people by the flesh, okay, and behavior because they're not seeing what God sees. Exactly, exactly. You know, I said to somebody the other day, I was we were talking, and I said, you know. Um, we are dead, buried, and raised again from the dead and seated at the right hand of the Father. Mm -hmm. And they said, if we believe. Mm -hmm. And I said, no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. no. <laughs> no. I mean, this isn't piecemeal. You know what I mean? Yes. It's not like it happens when you believe. No, mm -hmm. it is imparted. This truth is imparted to you when you believe, mm. right. and your heart is persuaded, okay? But the deed has been done for every human being. Yeah. You know, God was in Christ reconciling the whole world back to himself. Now it's just a matter of receiving what God has already done. Faith doesn't make things happen. 
faith appropriates what God has already done. And yeah. they're like, you're right, you're mm -hmm. right. But you see that little deviation, oh. if you don't see them as their sin being buried and then being raised up on a brand new platform of innocence, mm -hmm. go that way. If you still think they're dead in their sins, you're going to treat them like a dirty sinner. That's why we have to keep on hearing this word over and over. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Because it will, it will free our heart from this false, unrighteous judgment. You know, Absolutely. About ourselves and others. Yeah. Which the enemy yeah. wants to embolden. He wants to embolden through doctrine. Yep. Um, yeah, you know, uh, remember I said each other according to the flesh. Remember, I said um, this judgment in our heart. Um, let me turn to that scripture in Second Corinthians five. Yeah, where Paul said he said something very important. Okay. Let me say that while you're turning there. You know the song, and I hate to to mess up people's great song. You know, and I'm not trying to, but Amazing Grace. Yeah. A oh, sweet yeah. sound that saved a wretch like me. Right. Yeah. You know, uh, a wretch. And most people sing that with the idea that that God, God, God was God, looking God, at God, them God. as a wretch. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. And that that the only way he could look at us is what now is with a special pair of Jesus glasses. Mm. Right. You know, yeah. and, and we we laugh now, but that is that is really it's and, and it's not until you say the prayer that 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 god is able to even to look at you as his, even his child or whatever you know yeah which is mm -hmm. so far removed in context you talk about out of context from the truth of, of everything yeah. well jesus said it is finished and on his part it is finished we have to come into that realization that it's finished and right. be persuaded of that truth you know but absolutely. on his part it's done absolutely yeah. Now, what I was talking about before, about <coughs> having a judgment in our yeah. heart, mm -hmm. that judgment in our heart is either going to be a judgment that is judging according to the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, yeah, or that mm -hmm. judgment is going to come forth through the faith that was revealed in Jesus Christ, what mm -hmm. God believes, and mm -hmm. they're totally diametrically opposed. Mm -hmm. And Paul said this in 514 of 2 Corinthians. He says, the love of Christ constrains me. Yes. The love of Christ has got me in a vice because, what is the because? We need to know that because, mm -hmm. because that's the cause that caused him to be held in a vice. Yes. Because we thus judge. It's a judgment, okay? It's a mental decision, okay? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That if one died for all, then all were dead. And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Wherefore, or because of this, henceforth, because of this judgment that I have in my heart, which is the result of being persuaded of what God did in Jesus Christ. Henceforth, we know no man after the flesh. Mm. If you don't have that judgment in your heart, which is a persuasion to be persuaded of what God is persuaded of, you're going to treat men according to their flesh and their behavior. Amen. Yeah. So in Luke 4, is one of those scriptures we have all heard a thousand times, but after Jesus came out of the wilderness and he went into the synagogue, he says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me. He's, he's telling us, this is what I came here to do. That's right. Preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, yeah. to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. 
Mm. And then he said, he closed the book and sat down. He says, this day, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Amen. That day. I mean, and it's everything that we have just been talking about. Yeah. You know, that we have to see it to believe it. It's the recovery of sight to what we've been blinded to. Mm-hmm. And to, to heal the brokenhearted. Like he sees us as just bloodied, beaten, beat up. You know, that's what the world has done to us. And he said, I'm preaching the acceptable gear yes. of the father. Yeah. This is who I am. This is who the father is. Mm. You know, we've, we've got it so wrong thinking <laughs> that God was ever mad at us that's or right. disgusted with us. It's like, no, right here. He said it right here. He said it way back then. Yeah. You know what he came to do. That's right. He, he saw us as, I mean, he calls us, <coughs> you know, captives. We're enslaved to something. Right. You know, and slaves don't have a choice in the matter. They're That's held right. against their will. Yeah. yeah. That's right. That's right. Well, Jesus, and, for judgment, I came into the world that uh, those who don't see may see. Yeah, exactly. Came up to yeah. open up the blinded eyes mm-hmm. to the truth of God's love. Yeah. You know, and, and acceptance. Okay. And it's just like we, we've, de- you know, defined sin as, as uh, behavior, yucky behavior, you yeah. know, <laughs> and then God's been ticked off because of everyone's yucky behavior, you know? Yeah. But what really the truth is, sin isn't just defined, as, it is defined what? What is really sin? A belief unto the flesh. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> belief right. Unto the, so wrong belief. I think in Romans, I believe sin is mentioned 42 times. Mm-hmm. And only once is it a verb. It's mm-hmm. a noun. Right. That we it's were a inside. belief system that says you are what you do. Yes. If you do good, you'll be accepted. If you do bad, you'll be rejected. And that never came from the Father's heart. Nope. Never. Nope. And you know, that that word, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord, that word acceptable is approved, propitious, favor, benevolence, and advantages. Mm. We're living in the acceptable year of the Lord. Um, Paul said in 2 Corinthians 6, 2, well, I'll start at 6, 1. We then, as workers together with him, beseech you that you receive not the grace of God in vain. For he said, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I succored thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Now, if you read this yesterday, you read this today, you read this tomorrow or 10 years down the road, it's still now. (laughs) Faith is now. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Religion preaches distance and delay. God says no. I'm right here, right now. There is no delay or distance. Emmanuel, (laughs) God with us right now. Wow. Just stop and think about that. If we believe that. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's the difference. It's not your circumstances. And it goes right back to uh, Philippians 4. Let me see to here. Philippians 4. I love this part right here. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Now, what is rejoicing? Rejoicing is the voice of joy. Amen. So it comes out of heart of a heart that's filled with joy. And why is our heart filled with joy? We believe what God said. That's why. Okay. And it says, let your moderation 
be known unto all men. That word moderation is calm, temperance, exercising, restraint. I mean, you know, because you're believing, the fruit of the Holy Spirit is manifested in your life. You are at peace, you're calm. You have the spirit of self-control. Why? Because the Lord is at hand. You know, I actually believe the Lord is with me. Yes. <laughs> what difference our life is if we believe the Lord is with me? What shall I fear? If God be for me, who can be against me? Amen. Amen. You were talking about that word rejoice. You know, it's not a, a, a cheerleader trying to whip up the crowd. No. <laughs> and I feel like that sometimes, you know, where a, a lot of the worship and praise is, is the yeah. crowd trying to be. Yeah. You know, but really, it's a, like you say, it's a heart filled, you know, with the joy of the Lord. It's and, a manifestation. And, yeah, of well, the joy. Well, like Peter, was it Paul, uh, Paul and Silas? That's exactly what I was going to say, brother. Mm -hmm. They yeah. weren't singing and praising God to get a breakthrough. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they were singing and praising God because they knew that that beating couldn't separate them from the love of God. They were, I mean, they're in and not out. Amen. And they didn't allow any circumstances to to cause them to believe that they were orphans. They knew the truth. They knew that, that um, anybody that lives righteous is going to suffer persecution. It's far for the cause. But I praise God. You know, I remember years ago when we were ministering and uh, one of our first, well, it was our first convert, uh, went preaching with my husband down in Springfield and um, he was preaching to a cop. He got punched in the face. And he got punched in the face. And he was so happy about it. He was so happy. <laughs> <laughs> Losing your sound. They that are persecuted for Christ's sake. Amen. Blessed. He was blessed. The, Amen. The, the policeman was uh, walking and he was unable to contain himself with the uh, arrogance that we had of just being out on the street. Boldness. Yeah, boldness. Not arrogance. He considered it arrogant. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But he, yeah. yeah, he just punched Jim right in the face. You know, it's so funny. Uh, he started laughing. Yesterday. Um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, it was <clears throat> wonderful. And that makes me think of Joe James. She uh, uh, Greg was just uh, saying how she had fallen and hurt her leg. Yeah. Was praying for her. Well, she called me yesterday. Yeah. She, she was hysterical. She was laughing. She couldn't contain herself. She said, <laughs> Lord, you won't believe what happened to me. <laughs> just came back to her property and it was a mess. And so she got out the lawnmower and she gets out the sickle and she's breaking branches down and weeds down and uh -huh. made a big bump fire. She said, Beulah, I had this great bump fire and I fell head first, face down in the fire. <coughs> wow. Yeah. Oh, no. And she said, I had to push myself out of the fire with my hand. And she said, Beulah, have you ever seen a crocodile do the death roll? <laughs> she says, I got out of that fire and I did the death roll in that grass. Wow. And I got up and I was hysterically laughing. Wow. She said, it didn't burn me. Wow. She didn't even get her hair singed. Mm. And, and I tell you, I, I said to her, I said, girl, I says, who do you think you are, Meshach, Shadrach, or Abednego? <laughs> I said, you know. Did you try to smell her hair? <laughs> my hair didn't even get singed. I said, I'll tell you something. I remember a time, remember Janet, uh, at the church we were going to. We were ministers at the church, and we'd always get there early and sit up in the front. 
I don't know what to lay this. We were never late, but mm -hmm. this day we were very late. Mm -hmm. And the church was packed <laughs> and it was a candlelight service. <laughs> and everybody had candles in their hands. Um, we were at the very back. We were right in the entryway of the church. Like we were late, you know? We were late. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, all of a so sudden, funny. all of a sudden, the girl in front of us, hair went up in flames. With a candle. With a candle. <gasps> she Somebody had hairspray. Oh, wow. Hairspray. Spray. And, I mean, everybody froze. But Jim, he just grabbed her hair and went whoosh. And just pulled down her hair and took that in flames right out of it. Wow. I mean, she didn't get burned. She didn't get burned. Her head did. Yeah. But her her flesh did not get burned. She had a shorter haircut after. <laughs> yeah. But did she, she have a beehive hair? hair <laughs> <laughs> it was, she just had long hair. Yeah. But okay. the thing is, look at that. It wasn't a coincidence that, that we, were we were late. late. Right. Yeah. We I could, were if I had to run from the front of the church to the back of the oh. church, she'd have been dead. Oh well, she'd have been very burned. Very burned. Very yeah. burned. But I mean, it happened so quick. Mm. She had a hairspray or something on yeah, it. Was it like just, a it was. <laughs> but you know what? Just Jim grabbed, put his hands over her head, and just went straight down and put that fire right out. Wow. She was so blessed. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. You were sitting we, behind her. Yeah, right. We were standing. standing. We so had just come in the door. We, there oh, was no okay. place to sit down. I got we were you. standing in the back. The place was packed. And everybody's oh. holding candles. And fire. I said, you know what? You ought to do away with these candles and have little flashlights. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that was just well, that hairspray can be Remember dangerous. that, Jen? <laughs> Jen remembers it. <laughs> Oh my goodness, praise the Lord. But you know, look at that. It's yeah. being at the right place at the right time. Yeah, that's right. true. Yeah. It's just God knew what was going to happen. But you know, something else, the Lord will give you the mindset and the stability to do what you need to do in the time when it's required, which would not normally be your uh, MO. You yeah, know what I mean? Exactly. Amen. It just, that just, yeah. it wasn't me. It was the spirit of the Lord that moved me. Yeah. And I'm like, what do I do? What do I do? You know? Amen. Amen. It, 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 right. But the Lord has always got an answer when there's a problem. Yeah. And it's him that works it out. Yeah. Yeah. Love you always brings the solution. Yeah. I was thinking of a, a thought this morning. And that was, um, let the weak say I am strong. Mm -hmm. You know, when Paul said that when he's weak, that's when he's strong, because yeah. that's when the glory of Christ rests upon him. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, God works through weakness. Absolutely. Yeah. And I thought to myself, it's more difficult. Well, of course it is. Talk to yourself, feel like Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> It's I'm listening, easy. I'm listening, keep going. He's, Preach to the choir. <laughs> it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to go into heaven. Right. Mm -hmm. Because he trusts in his riches. Yeah. yeah. And the thought that came to me this morning was, it's mm. harder for a strong man to trust in the Lord than a weak person. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, hey, a weak person's got no choice, you know, either Jesus does it or I'm dead. Amen. But a strong man will trust in his strength. The rich man trusts his riches. Yes. It's yeah. Whatever you got. Exactly. So to be weak is really a good thing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. What does it, what, I'm trying to think of the scripture. Is it in Jeremiah? Uh, let not the strong man trust in his horses. Seventeen, do you want? There. Is it seventeen? No, it's the not on the, the right Lord. side of the page. Glory in the Lord. Glory in the Lord. Yeah, it's not that one, my beloved. Well, everybody, continue, and I'll see if I can find it. 
Praise God. You got uh, our attention, Julie. Oh, no, I don't get your attention. Yeah, not let him not let him not trust. Oh, I, you know what? I think it's in the Psalms. Okay, I'm going to mute it. Would you guys just continue? I don't want to disturb you. No, I think we're all diligent looking at the scripture. And she said, <laughs> did we lose our sound? I, am I there? Yeah. 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 Okay. You're there too. I, I think it's uh, Psalm 20, maybe. Let's see. Psalm 20, verse 7. Hmm. No. Psalm 20, verse 7. Oh, oh, 20. Okay. Ah. Verse 6. Now know that I, the Lord, saveth his anointed. That's you and me. He will hear him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand, Jesus. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. Hallelujah. We will yell, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus. Absolutely. <laughs> it's like that time. Remember, I told you when I had the, the um, Triumph Spitfire mm. and I had just bought it. And it's brand I, new. It, no, it wasn't. Well, it wasn't, it wasn't it brand, was brand new. It was beautiful. But yeah. what an idiot I was. <laughs> I, I took a second mortgage out to get that car. Mm. <laughs> Is that <laughs> crazy or what? That's called the lust of the flesh. <laughs> uh, you know, wanting, wanting. And uh, But anyway, I had to go out to this industrial park to get a... Um, a <clears throat> it was the belt, the belt for the washing machine. So I went out to this industrial park, got the washing machine. Belt. Yeah, belt, thank you. And I, I got the top down and it's gorgeous and it's a beautiful sunny day. And all of a sudden I smell this something burning. <laughs> and I pull over to the side and it has these clasps on the front hood and it lifts forward. I lifted it up and the flames were up here. The, the flames, I mean, my engine there was on fire. And guess what? This also person that was so foolish had no car insurance. Oh, no, oh, no. You got to save money. You know, no, that's all, no, I trusted in the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> I trusted in the Lord. I trusted in <laughs> So after the Lord, I said, I don't need car insurance. The Lord's going to take care of me. <laughs> well, he did. He did. Yeah. Peripheral vision. Peripheral vision. I see a, was it yellow? Antifreeze bottle. An, an antifreeze bottle. It's oh, so wrong. And grab this bottle, and everybody says, Was it full of antifreeze? No, it, it was empty. But I took it and beat the flames out. <laughs> the flames out, and then the Lord said, Beulah, take your window washer bottle. Oh. And what had happened at the side of the engine, the firewall, it was supposed to be made of asbestos so it wouldn't burn. This was cardboard. Oh. oh no! So it was on that. That's what caught fire. Pretty on the outside, but cardboard. Oh, and so oh. I took that window washer <laughs> and drizzled it on the top of the cardboard 
and saw the water go down and wet it. And on the other side, then I buckled it up and drove that sucker home. <laughs> and when Jim came home from work, I said, Dad, my car was on fire this afternoon. The, uh, where the engine is? He said, well, what did you do? I said, I put it out. He said, Beulah, you should have got away from that. It could have blown up in your face. I said, after all, I just paid for it. No <laughs> <laughs> and So what it was. I was safety first, you know. <laughs> oh, no. I Let it burn. And so I <laughs> looked, and it was the catalytic converter oh. was plugged. So he took a great big screwdriver and punched through it. Punched through it. Illegal. Yeah, we didn't have a catalytic converter after that. But no more fires. I thought you, I thought you were going to say you grabbed a bottle and threw it up uh, and thought it was water, but it was gas. And oh, no. That would have been bad. The Lord saved my car. Right yes, he did. He is a very present help in time of trouble. <clears throat> You know, yeah. and you do, you know, you don't think about it. You never stop and thought about it. Hey, this is, you know, this car's full of gasoline and this thing could be like a bomb and blow up in my mm -hmm. thing. You just do what you got to do, you know? Yeah. Well, that goes back to what you're saying about Jim earlier and the, the woman's uh -huh. hair that was caught on fire, you know? Exactly. And exactly. It just, he responded because his heart was established already, right? In, Absolutely. In the care of the Lord. Absolutely. Know? So he was carrying, you're carrying the heart of God and the wisdom of God. And yes. so be, it becomes just part of, of, it's just who we are. We just yeah. be who we are. The Lord, the Lord has got the answer for whatever we need yes. in any situation. Yeah. He has the answer. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, well, a lot of people would have could have run, run away from the situation, like you said uh, with Jim. He could have run away. Oh yeah. From the situation, or because of fear. Yeah. Not, or just be paralyzed. You know. Yeah, that's it. it. Yeah. It says the righteous are what is bold. Bold as a lion. Yeah. And we've Absolutely. been hearing messages on that where that confidence, the fruit of that confidence comes, right? Absolutely. Just look at look at Joe face down in the fire. Mm -hmm. And get yeah. up unscathed. That's that that's the Lord, you know. It's a miracle. Well, like Meshach, Shadrach, Meshach, and, and a bungalow. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, they, where, where do they get their confidence from? Absolutely. I mean, you yeah. know. And it's what just amazing. They had with the Lord. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, their heart was persuaded. It wasn't persuaded like everyone else's. They weren't bound the knee to the system, That's to the right. world system, you know, and, and all these things. And uh, it even it looks like they were the only ones, you know, like, yeah. you know, and it, it's, you know, it's sometimes it's just a minority. It's just few, you know. It seemed I wrote this thing yesterday. The Grace Road is often like a lonely road, but it's a glorious road. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yes. You know, because I'm amazed, and I know a lot of people are amazed that of uh, how many people have not yet received the fullness of this yeah. message. Oh, yeah. yeah. Receiving the full benefits of it, you know, and it's All just right. you know, your heart goes out, you know, you want everyone to hear. Yeah. But isn't that the heart of the Lord? You know, yeah. it's for everyone to hear this glorious gospel that they would see, that they would be set free, that they would be filled us with the fullness of his life and his joy, his kingdom. And yes. it wouldn't the kingdom wouldn't be just something that we try to build or do. Yeah, no. You know, but it's the kingdom of God within you. You know, you've received yes. everything around you is shaking. He says, yeah. but you've received and you continue to receive a kingdom that cannot be shaken so Amen. it's a confidence yeah it comes from having your heart just marinated in the truth that's of right. God's mm -hmm. word it's amazing yeah absolutely it's no longer i that live it it's him living in me that's yeah right. right and see we, we what i'm seeing and and it's got i guess start somewhere like with all of us it started maybe with seeing the scripture and quoting the scripture and quoting the scripture and, and it's and to a lot, it becomes like cliche. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. God wants it to be more than you can't. You can have relief from a cl cliche, but you can't be filled with the fullness of life. Right. You're just repeating right. a scripture. 
it's got to you've yeah. got to become intimate with it just like I, Absolutely. I remember what you said a couple of weeks ago about you know the lord you, you be, become intimate with that so intimate with that truth okay that it, it it's really becomes who you are it's, it's absolutely amen absolutely yeah it's um it's a spontaneous combustion yeah <laughs> it really is yeah that's the only way i want to live yeah is that spontaneous right then at that moment right now, right now animated by the spirit right. to do whatever there's nothing like it when has the lord ever let you down that's, in those situations that's, that's the way of jesus right that's the way of jesus and, and it's, it's especially when you do something that is not you right yeah you know and you find yourself doing it it kind of makes you look and go wow did you see that that yeah. was glorious I was, I was uh, participating in God's work. God um, wanted to do something, and he used my body to do it. Do it. And right. I'm like, did you say? That's wonderful. I love this life. Let's do it again. It's that river of life. It's that river of life that's flowing out yes. from you. And it's yeah. just like, you know, the wisdom of the Lord, and you can see different level i'm starting to see different levels of it to where i'm just like wow this is i know this is not from me this is from right the not like andrew said sometimes i'm not that smart or his mother yes said. yes <laughs> absolutely absolutely it's just yeah. it's such a powerful thing you know so you can say uh nevertheless not i but christ lives in me you know absolutely there's nothing like the life that is lifting God and and to see his great works yeah. you know, manifest to us, through us. Um, it's wonderful. You know, it's coming into revelation that you're dead and you don't see yourself anymore. You see Christ. Yeah. yeah. You flow in that river. Mm. Yeah. Like lazy the, river, lazy baby. River. Yeah. Like the lazy river on a big Cheerio. You know? Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> you you know? make me see that river as milk. I'm <laughs> <laughs> face down in it. <laughs> yeah, but it's, you know, it's, 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 you're no longer living by this Christian scripted Christian no. life where it's a script. No. Everything's a script. Everything's, uh, you know it's it's wow. so formula and scripted and there's you know it's just and it's just dead it's just yeah. a dead thing and yeah. we were talking about this you know last wednesday at our uh, bible study at church wednesday night about how so much evangelism is just a script it's just yes. script. Yeah. they go out with the romans road the script yeah. you know or whatever and they really wind up just trying to sell Jesus. You know, they're yeah. selling Jesus. They're trying to get people to say the prayer so that they can go back and report how many they got to say yeah. the prayer. Yeah. And yeah. how many people have really had their eyes open and persuaded about the love that God really has for them? You know, you know I was listening to Felum yesterday on uh, bursting wineskins. And he was saying, you know, when you're going to go speak to somebody, you don't want to just say the same thing you said to the last guy. No. You want to say, Lord, <laughs> you know, what does this person need to hear? Yeah. Right. And is that how Jesus was with each and every one? Did he go out with yeah. the woman's yeah. road? Just <laughs> like that lady on Sunday did. Uh, remember, she was hearing all of this noise about you can't understand and all that. And then she, the word that I spoke said, it doesn't make any difference if you can't understand what I'm saying. Right. Right. Listen for the voice within the voice. That's yeah. what she needed to hear. That's and right. the Lord knows that what she needed to hear. The voice right. within the voice. Yeah. And so, yeah. Just, small voice. You know, it's a spontaneous combustion of a life that's already inside of you. Yeah. Just let it flow. Yeah. Yeah. Just let it. Just let the life live itself. That's it. Let the life live. 
Relax and let it flow. <laughs> and that let is allow. Allow it to do it. And, and how are we going to allow that life to live itself unless we're persuaded that's the very best life to be lived? Right. Living it is active. Absolutely. Yeah. We're, we're living beings. We're alive. In, in yeah. The, and yeah. not, not living doings, but living beings. Right. Listen, if you're not persuaded, the, the life the Holy Spirit wants to manifest in you is the very best life. Mm, yeah, that's true. Then, you, then you're going to take control. Mm -hmm. And you are going to be active. Yeah. Yeah. And, wh and, and why, why would we, you know, the, back to Philippians, be careful for nothing. Mm -hmm. But in all, all things, uh, it says, be careful. Let me turn there. Yeah. Hold on just a second. Be careful for nothing. Yes. But yeah. in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. That is not the scripture I want. It's cast your care. There you go. On him. Mm -hmm. For he cares for you. Now listen. You are not going to cast your care is anxiousness, fretting mm -hmm. about something. Right. You're not going to cast it away from you and cast it onto the Lord unless your heart is totally persuaded he cares for me. That's Amen. Right. I mean, hello, I am not going to put my trust in another unless I'm totally persuaded that. Number one, he's able mm -hmm. to take care of the problem because you're not going to give it to somebody that hasn't got the ability to take care of it. And number two, that he cares enough about you that he's going to take care of it. Right. It's mm -hmm. good enough that you know that God is all powerful and all knowing. Mm -hmm. Just like that dude said to Jesus, I know you can. I know you can do it, but are you willing? Right. It was never a question, can you? It was mm -hmm. a question, do you care enough about me to do it? Right. And so if we know that God is all powerful and he's all knowing, he loves me, then you can throw all of your cares upon him that he's going to take care of you. Yeah. But you've got to be persuaded he loves you. And how are we persuaded <clears throat> that he loves us? We've got to keep hearing. We've got to keep hearing the word of Jesus. Yeah. The word of God's care for us and his love for us. Absolutely. Well, we can't be double-minded. See, a lot of folks are double-minded about God. <clears throat> that was 1 Peter 1, um, 1 Peter 5, uh, 7. Excellent. Excellent. You are right. Is five eight? First Peter. If you have, if you're coming from five, a, if you're coming from a belief a foundation of believing he loves me he loves me not based upon forget it you know my performance then that's always going to put your heart in a place of double mindedness towards God you're Amen. seeing God with, uh, double vision double mindedness Amen. and you're not seeing God for who he really is. That's yeah. why this message of, hey, God has never been angry with you. God right. has never been angry. Yeah. He has always loved you. It just upsets the carnal mind so much, you know, because yes. it doesn't know what to do. We have this T-shirt that says, God is not mad at you. And it's a right. black T-shirt with big white letters. And wherever you walk with that shirt, you're going to get people, their eyes zero right in on it. You know, most most T-shirts people don't look at, you know. This one, you can watch people. They, they cannot help but look at that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because in their mind, first of all, they're thinking, God is mad at me. And here's another one saying, God is mad at me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, but it's like, God is not mad at me. <laughs> they, yeah. They, yeah. 
they're all over themselves. They don't know what to think about that one, you know. Maybe maybe yeah. they see that somebody knows something that they don't know. So yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's the that's but you'll get a lot of great comments on it from people that do oh, see yeah. It. Yeah. Awesome. So I was reading in Luke, you know, just that that the Holy Spirit just makes alive what we've heard over and over again. Yeah. You know. <laughs> at a new time in life and so I had just read through Luke mm. and you get to Luke chapter six and you know and the whole time the Pharisees are coming I mean right after you know he he says you know what he came to do um that's when he goes out and says I gotta go to the other cities to preach the kingdom and he go, and then he goes, that's where they want to throw him off a cliff. Mm. And he walks back through and he just keeps going along, healing people, setting yeah. people free, all of that. And then you come to Luke six with the guy with the shriveled hand on the Sabbath. Mm. And he says, you know, is it lawful on the Sabbath days to do good or do evil to save life or destroy it? And so he said, stretch forth thy hand and his hand you know mm -hmm. restored to normal yeah and it says and they were filled with madness <laughs> and com communed with one another what they might do to jesus yeah wow. <laughs> and it's like wow that they wouldn't sit there and just marvel at that like this guy is coming and telling us He's come to do good to us and he's proving it mm -hmm. and they want to take and kill him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's just, that's madness. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's madness. True madness. You know, they, they had the same effect <clears throat> on uh, people that get out and actually speak and about Christ and such things, mm -hmm. those threats come to them as well. Just to, uh, just to, uh, somebody's trying to stop you. They they can't take it, mm -hmm. and they'll yeah. apply. They'll they'll try to frighten you. They'll try to uh, put fear into what you're doing so that you can't do what you're doing. Right. <clears throat> That's what happens if people don't know Christ. They're gonna oh, either yeah. accept or reject. Yeah, along the path, you know. Yeah. Well, some are more demon influenced than That's others. <laughs> you know. Yeah. So, yeah. But I wanted to go back to that scripture in First Peter, uh, five seven, casting all of your cares upon Him, for He cares for you. Okay. And then it says, "Be sober. Be vigilant." Because your adversary, the devil, is a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith. Mm -hmm. In the faith. What is the faith? The truth of God's love for you and his provision for you. Mm -hmm. So he's going to come against you. And it, I mean, that's sandwiched between two things. You cast your care upon the Lord because you know your heart is persuaded that he cares for you. And then um, whom resists steadfast in the faith. That's what mm. you're doing. You're keeping yourself in the persuasion yeah. that God cares for you. And right in the middle of it is because the devil's coming after you. Mm. He's going to try and devour you. Well, who is he going to mm. be able to gulp down? And that's what that devour means, to take a big drink or gulp down. Who is he going to be able to do that to? People who are not persuaded of God's love for them. I don't want to be the devil's lunch. Amen. Right. I just wrote that down. The the devil wants to eat your lunch and pop the bag. You know? that's, that's right. That's exactly he wants you to know, be the bully. He wants to be the bully, you know. Yeah. yeah. He, wants bully. he wants to take all your all yeah. your great lunch. 
And you know what? When you know that God is with you, you're fearless. That's right. You're fearless. You know, I mean, you can stand up and say, you know, there's nothing you can do to me. That's right. Because perfect love gets out of fear. That word vigilant means to keep awake. Yeah. What does that mean? Keep seeing. Keep seeing. Keep yeah. seeing. Don't let your eyes close to the truth that is in Christ, but keep your eyes wide open. Yeah, when you were saying that, resist steadfast and keep your, you know, keep uh, keep your heart re responsive. Yes. To God's love and care for you. Keep Absolutely. Responsive. You know, because that is the truth, right? And, yeah. And it's just no matter what's going on around you, the temptation is going to, um, you know, like we said, the enemy will come. You know, especially when things are, don't seem to be going well around okay. you the enemy will come <clears throat> and uh trying to sow offense through that circumstance in your life you know but keep yourself in the love of god right. you know keep yourself keep your heart yeah. responsive to who god really is and his care for you Amen. Well, that's what yeah, jesus says he was being nailed to a cross right yeah. he, he was still he, he kept you know his affection set on the father and the father. The scripture says he, the devil will come <clears> in the <throat> flood. He'll come in. I like to say it like this. Yeah, that's right. When the yeah. enemy comes in. Like a flood. Then you put no, it on. No. When the enemy comes in, comma, like then a, like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will raise up and stand right. it against him. <laughs> when you see the spirit of the Lord as that river of yeah. water. He comes in like a flood. Yes. Amen. Oh, squash that little ant. Amen. <laughs> well, the enemy comes in like the, like you said, the three little pigs, you know. <laughs> yeah. Nothing, oh, yeah. Nothing, you know, and and uh, as a roaring lion and as. all these things, you know, trying to make himself big in your eyes, like a lion. He wants you to stand in awe of him, you know. And I'll tell you something, too, is why a lion? And I believe that he is an imposter. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And he will come <clears throat> yeah. as the lion of the tribe of Judah mm -hmm. and get you to get you to be persuaded. It's God that's saying you're bad. Look what you do. And it ain't Jesus. It There's ain't Jesus. An old song. Until, until you know. Until you know that God is good yes. all the time, yeah. you believe those lies because you think when you've been taught that the Holy Ghost is going to come and convict you of your bad behavior, you believe it. Yeah, because he comes as a being of persuasion. That's you right, know. an angel of light. An angel of light, as an angel of light, as a roaring lion, as, as, as a great Poster pretender. There's an old song about, oh, yes, I'm the great pretender. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it's just like he comes in all that, like the Wizard of Oz, you know, yep. you know, uh, just trying to get us to stand in awe of him, you know, just to, to think big, really, of him. Yeah. You know, and little of God. That's what he does, you know, and the, and yeah. really, the, it's really. You know, as our heart is persuaded to see God for who he really is. That's I mean, right. If God is for you, who can be against you? Yes. You know, and that's what David's heart was persuaded with, right? Yep. He says, who is, it was David and the dwarf in, in David's eyes. It wasn't David and, and the giant. Right. You he know. Says, who is this uncircumcised Philistine, you know? So, go ahead. And, and first, Peter, what, what to finish that, Bueller, what you were talking about, but the God of all grace, who have called us unto eternal glory by Jesus Christ, after you have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish you, and strengthen you steadily. That's knowing the love of God. That's being persuaded of God's goodness that he's done that. He's He's in there the, by the Holy Spirit to do that in you. But Absolutely. you've got to be persuaded of his love. Yeah, right. Absolutely. Well, that word lack, and that's so important because so many people are under this persuasion again that it's just 
you know? Yeah. Sarah, Sarah, whatever will be, will be. You right. Know? Yes. It's like that is another trap of the enemy, you know? Yeah. And God has given us a free will and to respond to to his him. Yes. I think when I think when you know that my strength is in believing. Mm -hmm. what god believes about me yeah then i mean if my heart is persuaded right that i need to hear what the lord says about me to keep me mm -hmm. i'm gonna be bellying up all the time right right if you don't believe that i mean give it up I mean, I know my strength comes from the Lord and what he says. Yeah. That's instead, it. Of, instead of being persuaded of what the yeah. devil believes about us. Exactly. Right. Yeah. And that's basically what's been preached as far as uh, yeah. because we haven't been strengthened enough in our hearts to know that God's goodness and it's his goodness that we overcome. And that's what... Um, Exodus says in 34 about the goodness of God. He is good all the time. Yes, he yes. is. Yeah. Well, it's like we, we're been saying, you know, the whole world is full of persuasion and voices like we were right. in the beginning. And so um, you know, I mean, you can still, as a believer, no matter how long you've been in this thing, you can be persuaded. Oh, yeah. People. You know, and uh, I know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And so, where are we going to go? You have the words of eternal life. You know, yeah. Yeah. I don't care what, you know, and a lot of those, most that left were left because they believed the lie over the truth. That's you right. Know, hearts were filled with offense and they left. You know, yeah. what right. they leave? They left, they left the, only, the only life that there was, you know. The only life that we have is in Christ. It's not in this world. It's not in the flesh. It's not in any other person. It's in Christ mm -hmm. and his word, you know, and uh, <clears throat> yep. his, his word has to become that life. It, your heart has to be persuaded about this. That man does not live by bread mm -hmm. alone, but, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. That's you right. Know? And I can't do that. I can't do that for you. No. You know, I can, wow. we can proclaim that we can do this on Zoom, you know, every week and we can do what we do because we're really uh, compelled to, right? <clears throat> and it's just like, but people still have a choice, you know, to close, to, to, to shut their ears to one thing and open their ears to another. Mm -hmm. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church, you know? Yeah. You know, but it would be wise to listen to what's going on. A little right. while ago, you said something, and I had a thought, and I lost it, and it just came back to me. Okay. And that was when you said, you know, <clears throat> to believe um, the truth, even when things are going bad, that mm -hmm. look bad. And I thought to myself, you know, when the church was persecuted, the right. church grew. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Really, um, when things are going bad, we have a tendency to, oh, God, I need you, okay? I think the more dangerous time is when everything's going right. That's right. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. When everything is so right, you can become lazy, mm -hmm. complacent, and then the, the creature the created world can grab your attention mm -hmm. and you can be, you know, so focused on what's out there yeah. that you forget. He is your daily sustenance, baby. You can't afford to neglect hearing what God says about you. That's like in Habakkuk when he dug his heels in. Yes. When things were going, the Lord told him these things were going to happen. He dug his heels in and he yes. stayed fast. Exactly. You know, yeah. You know, 
In John 16, it says, these things I have spoken unto you that you should not be offended. Yeah. And that's what we, if we, if we don't believe God's good, we will get offended. Oh, yeah. Say that again, Janice. John 16. John 16. John 16, 1. These things have I spoken unto you that you should not be offended. Wow. Yeah. I was looking at when you were talking about forgetting, you know, he says, um, it says, um, uh, when you're, you know, your herds and your flocks multiply, it's Deuteronomy, there's a couple places. Yes, here. right. When you your herds and your flocks multiply and your silver and your gold are multiplied and all that you have is multiplied, yes. is lifted up and you forget the Lord your God who brought yeah. you out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Yeah. Amen. And does that scripture go on to say, and you think it's by the might of your hand? Yeah. It you does. Have got all these things? Yeah. See, when you forget, when you forget yeah. the goodness of God, amen, you can stop and think, well, boy, you know, I'm, I've done a good, good job. I mean, look at what I've done. Oh, please. <laughs> yes. That's called yeah, you're, you're right. You're right. Exactly. It's uh it could so it can go either way. Yes. A lot of people can fall under a great persecution and 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 things circumstances, you know, in this world seem to be not going right, you know, whatever. And if their heart's not established and who who is really caring for their life. Then they can allow offense to, to come in, even yeah. towards God. Yeah. Which a lot of people have. A lot, you know, they because they haven't been established in the love of God. Yes. You know, like that. Then then many have said after, you know, I put my trust in God. And look, you know, but they were they they really were they were really their foundation was off. Amen. Amen. I don't know if you ever heard that uh, expression. Remember uh, when uh the guy and the girl would uh, go to a dance. Oh, yeah. And they would. Uh, yeah, the, dance with the one that brung you. Yeah, dance yeah. with the one that brung you. Yeah. And it's the Lord that has brung every one of us. Yes. To, to yeah. us. Amen. And, and we do prosper yeah. by keeping our focus on Him. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And allowing Him to bring yeah. us to the highest yeah. height we can. Prosperity, do. true prosperity. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Because, yeah. He brought you to the dance. Yeah. Don't let your eyes rove to something else. Yeah. The outside, dance is the one that brought you there. Outside the party, right? <laughs> in, yeah. That in the um, uh, Mark 4 17, it says, and, and <clears throat> they that have new, no root in themselves endure but for a time. And yeah. if you're rooted in God's love for you, you're mm. not. It, that's everything you because love never fails no amen absolutely absolutely yeah i think i think about what the lord said to me a couple of weeks ago in worship when he said now abide a faith hope and charity or faith hope and love and the greatest of these is love and i said but lord without faith we'll never come to know your love and he said it's just a means to an end right Right. I mean, right. the the goal, the end of all instruction, the end of the commandment is love yeah. out of a pure heart. Yeah. I mean, you know what? I mean, this is this is the process. We are being persuaded by the faith of God to believe who we are and who are we? We're children of love. Mm -hmm. And so when you come to that place where love is abounding in your heart. Mm -hmm. And you're loving. I mean, you're solid there. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's bringing us to love. Exactly. That's who he is. Yeah. That's who he is. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. That gets me. Lord, Lord, do it. Amen. Lord, I love it when my heart is filled with love. Amen. There's not, nobody can do nothing to me because I am so Teflon, baby. <laughs> You know, yeah. it just all just whatever comes it just slides right off because i know my father loves me yeah. and it doesn't make any difference 
Love what? is the most powerful thing. It is. Now it you is. start to think just like Jesus. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hallelujah. I mean, the just start to think of the love of Christ that they he could allow them to nail him to a cross. Yeah. I mean, my goodness, that's the love of Christ. I heard people say, listen, he didn't need nails to keep him on that cross. It was the love of God that kept him there. Yeah. Yes. So, you know, Song of Solomon says in um, 8, 6, set me as a seal upon thy heart. Um, set, oh, yeah. So, and a seal upon thy arm. For love is stronger than death. Jealousy is cruel as a grave. And the coals thereof are coals of fire, which have vehement flame. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. It has a most vehement flame. That's Amen. the flames of Yah, of Yahweh. Amen. Yes. And it's so funny because I just saw these notes right here. And it says, don't fear the fire. <laughs> don't fear the fire. Listen, if you're a child of the fire, if you're born of the fire of God, you know, you're not afraid of the fire. Oh my goodness, it can't hurt me. Make the fire. God, hallelujah. It's a fearful to fall into the hands of the living God. He's a consuming fire. Oh my goodness. Consume me, Lord. Consume yeah. everything that can be burned, that only that which is pure, which is you, will remain. Hallelujah. When you know you're eternal, baby, you're not afraid of the fire. Okay, that's did it. That's done it. You're going to the fire. All this all this session, there's been a, a not an attack, but a, a an influence on my brain. It's been going and going and going, and I have not said it. Okay. And I'll tell you, and you maybe help me to say it. Okay. I was walking on the street in Hartford, witnessing and handing out tracts. Mm -hmm. And I came across two big men and a skinny woman mm -hmm. on a bench. Yeah. I'm coming by, and she runs to me, a demonic spirit. Mm -hmm. came to me. And she's coming. She says, I'm going to put this cigarette out in your eye. Yep. And there's two guys, big muscular guys, black guys, who are with her. And they're trying to contain her. One of them on each arm. And she is dragging them. And she's a skinny woman. Yeah. And she was violent in everything that she was doing and she's speaking to me and i left my arms beside my side the whole time i talked yeah. to her yeah. and she had this cigarette and she's trying to push it in my eye before she did the cigarette she was spitting at you yeah she was spitting at me but it would come and then fall down did it would come you? across the air to me and then fall yeah. it didn't uh -huh. hit me it, it's not natural for that to happen. It yeah. took its course and then goes down yeah. every time. Wow. And and this this yeah. went on for a little while. And these two guys were trying to hold her down. These yeah. two big guys. Yeah. And she was so overwhelmed in demonic influence yeah. that they could not control her. Yeah. And wow. she had this cigarette. She says, I'm going to put this cigarette out in your eye. And I said, you can do nothing to me because God is my God. Mm. And she, I don't remember the I, details. I'll tell you okay, what go happened. ahead. She got right up and he didn't do a thing to stop her. She got right up to his eye and she saw something and she became totally afraid mm. and backed mm. off. Wow. Mm. I didn't remember. That. Yeah, she must have yeah. saw you with the apple of God's eye. She must have saw his reflection in your eye. I don't know why she saw, but she but backed she away. She was afraid. It was wow. it was quite a deal. I remember it. It's been years. Yeah. Right. It goes back to the apple of the eye. You know, yes. when you get real close. Yeah, 
Yes. Yeah. Who says you're the apple of my eye? He sees yeah. his reflection in your That's eye. Right. And you see his she reflection. saw something. Yeah. yeah. Right. These, these two guys were kind of like her friends, but they weren't resisting. They were trying to protect me from her, yeah. both of them. And they yeah. were big, muscular guys. Yeah. And she was dragging them along. Yeah. This little woman just dragging them <laughs> along. It was yeah. like she was demon possessed. Is my, yeah. my, yeah. Absolutely. Only thing I could do. There it is. You don't have to worry about nothing. No? He's got it. Well, that's the We've got to be persuaded of that. Right, exactly. It, okay. can, it has to be more than just a scripture we quote. No, oh, no, yeah. because let me tell you something. Evil can come against two people. One is totally persuaded that God is more than enough, and the yeah. other one ain't. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And the outcome's not going to be the same. No, well, they, both, they both know the same scripture. Yeah. 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 And they both say it, but one's persuaded and one's not fully persuaded. Exactly. Right. And, yeah. then, and the person that's not persuaded of God's love for them, if they get the snot beat out of them, then they turn around and say, well, what is it doing? <laughs> Blame God. Right. So, that's where the offense comes, you know? Exactly. But you know what? We've got to believe what God says, yeah. you know? Just like I said a few weeks ago, those the scripture in Mark 16, these signs shall follow all them that believe. They'll cast out devils, they'll lay hands on the sick. Believe what? Not believe that Jesus is Lord. Just, well, I accepted Jesus Christ as my personal savior. Well, you got lots of people that have done that. Yeah. But you don't see any power in their life. No. But those that believe, mm. like Jesus said, marvel not at the things that I do, for you shall do greater things than I, because I go to my Father. If you believe that the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwell in you, amen, and he's more enough for whatever yeah, you absolutely. can face. mean to say that it will always be comfortable? Oh, you may suffer some loss. But if you suffer, you will be able to do it like Silas and Paul mm -hmm. and rejoice. Amen. Amen. Because, I mean, I've, I've been all over the place there. And it doesn't make any difference. Just as long as my heart is persuaded of God's love for me. And if something bad happens to me. I don't think God wasn't faithful to me. No. I am just, my heart is, he was able to keep me. Right. In the situation. Yeah. You know, whether I get, you know, the Lord does something to cause the person to fear and run away, or they would have punched my lights I think. Oh. I think what was happening with me is the enemy was trying to stop me because I was passing out tracks. Oh. Oh, sure. Every day that I wasn't working or something. Yeah. So in the whole city of Hartford. But the thing is, like it says in uh, I think it's Philippians, in nothing be yeah. terrified of your adversary. Right. In nothing. Yes. Okay. That means it, listen, if I'm going, let me turn there. If I am not going to be terrified in anything. Concerning my adversary, then I'm going to have to be persuaded of something. Absolutely. Amen. It's uh, Philippians 1 28. In nothing terrified by your adversaries. How can you be terrified in nothing? That's right. When your adversaries are coming against you, you got Jesus. <laughs> You'll be terrified in nothing. That's right. That's you right. are totally persuaded that God is with you. Amen. Which is to them, your adversary, right. token of perdition, mm. their mm. lostness, mm. but to you of salvation and that of God. Yeah. When I can be, when I can be a, as bold as a lion in the face of my adversary. 
that makes me go, wow, just look at this. I feel like really good. And all of this is coming against me. Mm. This is salvation. Yeah. And they're looking going, why isn't she tormented by all of our threats? That's a sign of their lostness. Absolutely. It shows them that you got something going on that they don't have. You know, I think that the, the devil, and I'm not glorifying his name. I'm yeah. just saying that that it's he's going to be out there doing what he does Absolutely. for as long as he can. That's right. But that doesn't have any effect on whether we have any effect or not. When we put our trust in the Lord, yeah. we can control situations that we never knew of before. Absolutely. By the power of the Holy Absolutely. Spirit. Absolutely. Just saying a word could call, cause uh, yeah. them to turn and run. Well, you know, people say, well, Jesus did what Jesus did because he was the son of God. You can't, you can't. Uh, you can't hey, we're Jesus sons did. of God too Amen. and daughters. The scripture tells us in the book of Hebrews that Jesus offered himself up by the eternal spirit. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. It wasn't because Jesus was the son of God. Jesus was a man filled by the power of the Holy Spirit. Right. And he did what he did through the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Here it is. It's in Hebrews 9, 14. It says, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself. Yeah without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Yeah. The spirit, that is <laughs> glorious, because I just learned to something serve the new. living God. The spirit that enabled Jesus mm. offer himself up is the same spirit that's going to purge our conscience. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Our evil conscience, exactly. our conscience that was educated by the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Of condemnation and guilt. And when the conscience has been educated by the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, then it will either excuse you or accuse you. But when it's been sprinkled by the water of the word mm. and washed clean, you your conscience is no longer subject to the law of do to be it's mm. subject to the faith of god that says i am what god says it doesn't make any difference i'm the righteousness of god in christ yeah. on my worst day yeah amen and believe it. man i just got about 25 messages here on this. <laughs> this, is, this has been unreal it just keeps getting better and better uh we are at not that we're keeping time but it's 11 39 wow boy did that go <laughs> fast and so it's it's been awesome uh this word and we're going to put it out just as as quick as we can and just pray that this word of life that has come uh just from the holy spirit would just just whoever hears it would receive it yes with an open yes. heart Amen. that their heart would be persuaded towards this life Yes. And this love that God has for them, that, that they would be set free. Yes, Jesus. Their conscience would be cleansed, yes. Lord God, that they might understand and see what your heart is for them, that they would live from your heart, Lord God. Yes, yes, yes. Believe what you believe in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes, amen. That wow. Was wonderful. This, been, this <laughs> has been good. Hey, before I'm, uh, I'm, you might have to have you sing, uh, uh, our lead worship uh, while I'm gone. When are you to, gone? I'm going to slide down. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, before I'm, it's my Sunday? No, the 5th, uh, the 5th and the 15th. The 5th, well, Michael. Wait a minute. You gave me the 12th and the 5th. 5th and the 12th. I'm sorry. 5th and the 12th. Um, I do worship. Yeah, I just want to pre-warn you on that. Oh yeah, well I already determined that I'm. Then we can get together to Sunday too and and kind of go over some things. Yes, absolutely. So I'm gonna go hang out with those guys for a, a couple of weeks 
And oh, actually, hi. I've been invited to preach on the 12th. So oh, I'm, you're going to be oh, preaching nice. on the 12th? I'll, be, I'll, have, I'm, I'll be at the infamous blackboard with the blue lights. Wow. So, <laughs> this going to be good. Got to be good. Amen. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. It's all God. Amen. Yes, sir. Thank Amen. You, okay. Well, any last words before we close? Okay. Well, good. Been rich. Oh, God bless. Thank you. Thanks for sharing that testimony too, Jim. That's awesome. Just a lot of yeah. awesome good things come out of this whole thing. It's amazing how the Holy Spirit just brings it all together. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we don't come here with any agenda or any script or anything. It's just people filled with yeah. the, the This Holy is Spirit. just the spontaneous life. It's all spontaneous combustion. combustion. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Amen. Hallelujah. Love you guys. Love you guys. Love you guys. Bye. 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 Bye.